everybody, and welcome back to the Monguli Show. Today, we've got a huge weekly blog update that we're gonna go over, including level 100 cap increase, improvements to a bunch of orbs, the kit reveals for the Hive Mind team, and how you're gonna unlock Sunspot coming up in the next week in Marvel Strike Force. Let's talk about it. All right, we've got the Hive Mind, courtesy of planet Clintar, a symbiont invasion is bursting into the scene and soon forming a powerful new Hive Mind team. Void Knight and Gwenum are bounding, bonding with the updated veterans Venom and Carnage to form the initial team and a powerful fifth member, Red Goblin, will be joining in version 7.7. .7. This squad of symbiotes and their host specializes in feasting into bio late, re, bio, into bio raid lanes, especially in the Incursion Raid 2. So wrap your tendrils around the squad to gain major progress and rewards during your raid missions. Uh, Void Knight, Zen Law Astronomer Norin Rad, so this is just gonna be the history of Silver Surfer, and then hopefully they'll get into why he has a symbiote on him. Uh, Norin Rad bargained with the world eater Galactus to become his herald in exchange for sparring his home planet. Galactus transformed Rad into the Silver Surfer, endowing Rad with the power cosmic, which granted him superhuman abilities and cosmic energy manipulation. After a defeat in battle, Silver Surfer discovered All Silver, a sister symbiote to All Black. Bonding with Silver Surfer created a powerful new host symbiote pair, the Void Knight. I think we could have done a better story than that, but sure. Void Knight is a support for the Hive Mind team, but his Simeon isn't your typical squad sustainer. On top of atomizing enemies with high damage attacks, he steals ability energy from enemies while also generating ability energy for allies. Void Knight also controls the battle by pulling enemies together into a convenient pile for easy attacks, flipping their effects, and applying ability block. His abilities become even more powerful in raids, but Void Knight's strongest ability is preventing enemies from gaining immunity, which allows his teammates to tear through raid waves with their negative effects. He's gonna have the traits Hero, Cosmic, Bio, Support, Spider-Verse, Symbiote, and Hive Mind, another Spider-Verse character, because we don't have nearly enough of them. His speed is 113, which is fine. I just hate reading these freaking kits. We really, I guess we'll go, we'll go over the two new characters. I'm not gonna do the reworked characters. Hey everybody, Future Dan here. I was just doing some editing and I was going over this. The video is really long and these kit reveals I personally find super dry. I'm gonna leave them in this time, but leave a comment down below if you either really, really like them and want me to keep doing the kit reveals or if you want me to skip the kit reveals because you're just reading a giant wall of text and especially when there's multiple kits, it's really, really boring. I'd love to know what your input is and so we can make this channel better going forward based on what you guys legitimately want. If you want to keep watching this kit reveal, go ahead, I'll cut right back to it and we'll keep going. But uh, if you don't want to do that, I'll leave a timestamp down below here so you can skip ahead and get the rest of the blog review without having to watch the kit reveal. Cheers everybody, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. His basement, Cosmic Corruption, attack primary target for 340% damage, flip three negative effects into positive effects on self. If this character has no negative effects, flip three positive effects into negative effects on primary target instead. In raids, always flip three positive effects into negative effects on the primary target, regardless if this character has any negative effects. This attack cannot be counterattacked. This is a pretty good basic. That's just his basic. ISO counterattack slash assists, attack target for 225% damage and 17% piercing, flip three negative effects into positive effects on self. If this character has no negative effects, flip three positive effects into negative effects on target instead. In raids, always flip three positive effects into negative effects on target regardless of this character has any negative effects. So you're either getting making yourself better and if you can't make yourself better, then you're gonna make your opponent worse. Uh, his special, Scourge of the Spaceways, energy cost is a six out of six. Steal up to one ability energy from the primary target. In raids, steal up to three ability energy from the primary target and attack primary and adjacent targets for 350% and apply defense down for two turns. This attack can also not be counterattacked. I'm seeing a theme here. Ultimate is his Dark Horizon. It's a five out of five. Uh, that makes it sound like I'm rating it. I'm not. Uh, pull all enemies up to two spaces towards the primary target, then attack primary target uh, within two spaces for 320% damage. Flip three positive effects into negative effects on all targets. Pull all enemies up to two spaces towards the primary target. Okay, so you definitely want to hit the middle person every time if you possibly can. Flip all positive effects on Spider-Verse enemies. 
apply ability block for two turns to the primary target in raids apply ability block to all targets this attack gains 5000 percent extra focus is unavoidable and cannot be counterattacked. passive and to the void on spawn generate two ability energy for all hive mind allies that's actually really good uh generate one ability energy and one additional ability energy per hive mind ality for this character so you're gonna be getting a bunch there uh fill this character speed bar by 25 percent on end of turn heal so that's gonna help with his speed oh, wow that was obvious but i mean the fact that his speed is only 113 is, is kind of a lie because he will be going a little bit faster at least at the very beginning on end of any turn heal for three percent of this character's max health when an enemy takes damage from bleed heal self and all hive mind allies for 10 percent of this character's max health gain 60 percent max health hive mind allies gain 30 percent max health gain 60 percent armor and hive mind allies gain 30 percent armor on spawn apply speed up to self and all hive mind allies on spawn apply slow to the enemy with the highest speed enemies cannot gain immunity hive mind allies gain an additional 30 percent max health and the additional 30 percent armor gwenum after losing her powers gwen stacy sought out the help of crime kingpin matt murdoch and his scientist elsa brock brock combined the mutagenic lizard serum with isotopes to form a version of the venom symbiote dubbed gwenum Gwen bonded with Elsa Brock's symbiote, restoring her abilities, but leading to an internal struggle to fend off the symbiote's penchant for violence. Gwenum is a high damage brawler for Hive Mind who allows her allies to dig their symbiote incisors into enemies by controlling the battle. On top of the standard clobbering that a brawler deals out, she generally ab she generates ability energy for Hive Mind allies and infects foes with powerful negative effects like defense down, stun, and offense down. Gwenum also helps keep her Hive Mind allies in the battle by healing them on each of her turns. Her traits are Hero, City, Bio, Brawler, Spider-Verse, Simeote, and Hive Mind, and has a speed of 120. So her basic, Savage Web, clear barrier on primary and adjacent targets, attack primary and adjacent targets for 320% damage, and flip two positive effects to negative effects, and apply defense down. That's really good for a basic. Apply two bleed to primary target, and in raids, generate one ability energy to self and all Hive Mind allies. ISO 8 counter attacks and assists, attack primary and adjacent targets for 240% damage, 17% piercing, flip two positive effects to negative effects, and apply defense down, apply two bleed to primary target in raids, generate one ability energy to self, and all hive mind allies. Her special is the tongue twister, it's a 4 out of 4, give the opposite, uh, sorry, gain the opposite of all negative effects, excluding bleed, on the primary target. Attack primary target for 320% damage and apply stun for two turns. Attack adjacent targets for 320% damage. Generate one ability energy for self and all hive mind allies. And in raids, spread all positive effects, excluding stealth, taunt, and regeneration from self to all hive mind allies. Uh, her ultimate is the Symbiotic Fury, energy cost 3 out of 5, clear all barrier from all targets, barrier self, hive mind, and all Spider-Verse allies for 15% of this character's max health, attack all enemies for 400% damage, and apply offense down for 2 turns. Apply offense up and defense up to self, all hive mind, and Spider-Verse allies, and in raids, Apply stun to the enemy with the highest damage, ignoring taunt or stealth. That's really good. Generate one ability energy for self and all hive mind allies. And this attack gains 100% extra focus per symbiote ally. So you should be getting 400% symbiote uh, extra focus. Passive, symbiote ghost. When the character uh, or a hive mind ally drops below 50% health, apply two evade to that character. On turn, heal self and all symbiote allies for 5% of this character's max health. While this character's health is above 50%, gain 15% dodge chance. While this character's health is 50% or lower, gain 30% drain. Gain 60% focus. Hive mind and spider verse allies gain 60% focus. We're not going to go over the Venom and Carnage reworks, but I did just want to point out that is a freaking dope picture of Venom. That's really cool. Congratulations on the art department. I love it. And just as I give the art department praise, I'm going to take it away and say, what the hell is this guy? This is ugly as and I don't want it. I won't be using this. Other people can do whatever they want with it. Inject alien parasites into your roster and a new costume for Nova with the arrival of Void Knight. Sounds like this costume will be going live on January 16th, along with your ability to purchase uh, orbs so you can try and unlock Void Knight with power cores. 675 as per normal, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be alive in the red store orbs as well, so make sure you're getting those if you can. All right, if we jump into the game for a second, we can actually take a look at that costume, and it's bad. It's, I don't, I, I don't like it at all. 
like this weird meat suit thing that he's wearing is real gross. Uh, the flaming helmet and shoulder pads, like I can kind of see where they're trying to go. I don't know that they got there. Uh, I'm not going to be using it on my team and I'm looking forward to crushing people who use it on their team. That's uh, going to be a pass from me. All right, the Pact of Wrath is a premium milestone that you're gonna to need to do if you wanna unlock that hideous Nova costume. It is gonna be a spending money event, so if you are a free-to-play player or cheap player, ignore what I'm about to say. Um, if you do spend money, then you can unlock the costume by getting uh, certain milestone points, and there sounds like there's a way where you can actually instantly unlock the new Hive Mind characters, including Void Knight, Gwenom, and Red Goblin if you're willing to spend enough. So they make it sound like it's a really good thing, but realistically, if you're spending enough money, you're gonna get the characters no matter what. So it's not really changing anything, but you know, do with that information what you will. Void Knight offers. So offers that contain enough character shards to instantly unlock Void Knight will also contain the Corrupted Helmet. Now this is one of those things where if you buy a certain offer, it'll unlock different offers that you can also spend money on. So like it's a chain that you can work yourself down. If you're gonna spend money, I guess this is the way to do it, but like don't spend money if you weren't going to already. Symbiotic Collective is exactly what we just did with the Extreme X-Men. You're gonna have your test drive, your store, your challenge, your hive mind, and your bonus attacks. Depending on which characters you've got and what levels you've got, it will determine how high up you can do in this. But this is a nice way for you to test out some characters, probably gonna give you a bunch of Venom and Carnage shards so you can unlock those characters or get them up to seven stars if you don't have them already. They've been in the game a long time though, so I'm assuming that you do, I assuming that I do. I really haven't looked at those characters in a very long time. And if you can unlock Void Knight or Gwenum early enough, you can probably pro probably progress further in the challenge mode. Do as best you can with this, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about it because we literally just did this event with a different team. All right, the Solar Schematics event is going to be your way of unlocking Sunspot starting on Monday, January 15th. If we jump into the chart, you can see that we're going to be earning the Solar Schematic Orbs from doing ISO 8 campaigns. Now, it doesn't have the rate. We'll have to check back in on Monday and do the actual math for this event. But for right now, you can see that you're also going to be wanting to do win or lose war battles. There is a cap on that, so don't just tank and like, go crazy with how many war battles you're going to win. You only need to get 10 wins per war, so... Don't go nuts. If you miss a couple in one war, you can make it up in the next war, which is nice. You're gonna also gain points from doing your superior six. So make sure you've got all five of those characters unlocked. And if you've got them at gear tier 17 or gear tier 18, you're only gonna get more points. Now you're gonna have available for you 78,000 X batteries, as well as 25,000 points from the Scanalyzer for 103,000 points towards the month long event, which is pretty good, as well as 75 shards for Sunspot. Now you only need 45 shards to unlock them and we did get some points from the free claim. So you should unlock your sunspot fairly easily with this event. But again, we'll go into this math more in depth on Monday when it goes live so we can break it down exactly for you. There's also a feeder event that you're gonna do to get web milestone points. Now this is a little bit weird because it says you're gonna earn blitz credits in order to unlock these things. Now this is not a blitz event and usually they don't put blitz events with non blitz events, but this is what it says. It does also say midnight mayhem at the top though. So this chart might just be wrong. It does have the right solar schematic milestone points, so I don't really know what's going on here. Again, check back Monday. If this chart is accurate, you're gonna be able to get 4,000 orbs, or two, two orbs, 4,000 orb fragments, I guess, as well as 36,000 milestone points, which is gonna be huge towards helping you get your sunspot. So if this is a blitz event, that's sneaky and sucks, but let's check out later and make sure that this is accurate because the title is 100% wrong, and I'm hoping those blitz credits are wrong too. Allied Engine is next. This is an alliance-wide event, and you're going to be participating in raids if you want to do well on this. It starts on Tuesday, January 16th. What you're going to want to do is battle in raids, uh, and you only need to do your 10 raids per day, so you don't have to go crazy with that, but you can go a little over that if you've got some alliance mates who are not participating as well as they should be. You're going to have a limit of 384,000 points for that. You're also going to gain points for doing raids with your extreme X-Men, whether they're at 5, 6, or 7 yellow stars. Now, Gambit and Cyclops have been in the game for a very long time so hopefully you got them at seven yellow stars but as far as the other characters go i think you're going to be lucky if you've got them at five yellow stars by this point you're also going to collect allied supply orb three fragments this is an upgrade to the allied supply orb two and you're going to be getting these through free offers or by spending money on the internet so get as many of those as you can but don't go crazy this is an alliance wide event it's going to last for four days if you can make it to the very bottom of this event you're going to be rewarded with a one diamond venom this is a weird one for me because on one hand, one diamond venom is going to be really nice. But the people who make it all the way down to that very bottom level probably already have a one diamond on venom. And the people who want the one diamond on venom probably aren't going to make it down to that very bottom level. So like, who is this actually incentivizing? Let me know. 
Uh, as far as X batteries go, you're going to be able to get 28,000 of them towards the month long event, and you only need to get 390,000 points, which is just a little bit beyond what you're going to want to do with just battling raids. If your entire alliance is participating in the raids at all, that should be your 384,000 points. You only need 6,000 additional points if you want to complete that and get all of the batteries possible. There's also two mega gold orb fragments down there at the very bottom. I'm not 100% sure where I land on these. The floor for them is very low, but the ceiling is super high. I think I've only opened one so far and it was pretty mediocre, but let me know how your luck has been with them. And just for the sake of showing you, there is a leaderboard attached to that event. Um, you're gonna need a three diamond venom if you are literally the number one alliance in the game. Everybody else can uh, try and strive towards a two diamond venom and only the top 3% are really getting anything worthwhile out of this whatsoever. So for like 4% down to like 100%, you're going to get some Armory 17 stuff, maybe some Armory 18 stuff, really nothing to care about. So as per normal, just do your best. As per usual, we also have the Systems Online Quick Rumble event. It's going to be using your Pegasus team, whether you have them three, five, or seven stars. This is a fairly newer team, so you might not have them all at seven stars just yet, but do your best. You're going to get a bunch of batteries for this. It's just the Quick Rumble event. All right, now we get into some more interesting stuff. The Allied Supply Orb Improvements. They're just talking about how you're going to get 300% more gold from these, as well as 150% more training materials. Now, that sounds really good, but keep in mind they're also doing the level 100 cap increase. So are they just keeping pace or are they actually improving these? I don't really know. We'll have to see what happens when they go live. I would love to be positive and encouraging about this, but like... We don't know how much gold it's going to take to get from 95 to 100, so that extra 300% might do basically nothing. Now, if you're not at 95 yet, it's going to be a huge bonus for you. Congratulations. But for everybody else, it's kind of a we'll, we'll have to wait and see. And the big one, level 100 is coming to the game in a little bit less than two weeks. It is two Mondays away. It is January 22nd. If you're at level 95 and you are stuck there, this is your way to progress your characters for every event in the game. I'm speaking super basically, but honestly, that's what they say in the blog post as well. Like, ooh, add power to your characters for raid, Cosmic Crucible, and campaigns. Yeah, duh. Thanks, guys. Um, you're going to get uh, an XP event if you are not at level 95 yet. The XP event starts before the level cap increase. This is just to get people caught up. This is not to help you get to level 100 faster. So don't don't read that wrong. This is just for those newer players. There is going to be a login calendar. We don't know what's in that yet and special offers. So head to the store to grab special deals and energy and XP to help you increase character levels. Again, probably only if you're not at 95 already. If you're looking for more gold to help increase your character levels, we've got some updates and this one's big. A new gold rush challenge will go live uh, the same day as level 100 in February. This could actually be really big news because the last time we got a new gold update, it, it did help us quite a bit. So I want the campaign to be hard. I don't necessarily want to be able to unlock it right away. I don't necessarily want to have to wait till I'm level 100. That would kind of suck. But I want it to be a difficult thing and I want the rewards to be really, really good for this. We'll have to see. We don't have any numbers on that. We just know that we're going to get a new campaign level uh, for the gold rush and that it should increase the gold significantly. The Scourge event input updates. This is big news and this is fantastic. This is what a lot of people have been complaining about. Now, it doesn't fix all of the problem about earning Apocalypse, but it goes a long way. It really, really does. What this is going to mean is that for those uh, people who are doing difficulty 5+, plus nodes 5 and 10 are really going to get an update so before you had to use web warriors or dark hunter if you want to earn morgan le fay and now you can use underworld or hive mind this is big as hive mind is going to be a big team in the game underworld is maybe a little bit less impressive they're still really good in war and i personally really like them because kingpin is one of my favorite characters in the game period well in comics period but as far as the hive mind goes this is a team you're going to be wanting to build up huge anyways so now you're actually going to get rewarded with that with morgan le fay Infestation, Secret Defenders, and New Warriors are all added to the Famine team, with Secret Defenders being one of the better teams in the game right now, so that's awesome. Infestation and New Warriors are both also good teams and are much better than A-Force or Inhumans. I still like the Young Avengers. They've got a little place in my heart, but I'm not building them up any higher, and neither should you. Red Hulk, you're going to add your Asgardians, your Black Order Thanos, uh, to your Hero Asgardians, which is a little bit redundant, your Ravagers, and your Wave 1 Avengers. This is... Maybe the least impressive of all of them. It's nice to add that Asgardian because that will get your Val in there as well as your Beta Ray Bill. But there's still some Asgardian characters that we don't really care all that much for. That said, Thanos and Black Order are being added as well. So it's not bad news. It's just not as impressive as the other two. 
And the big one, Archangel. You no longer have to use just minions. You can also use villains, any villains. This is an incredible add. You can also add your Pegasus team so you're not stuck with just Bionic Avengers or Wakandans, neither of which you should be leveling up whatsoever. This one is going to be huge for people who are trying to get Archangel because not having to build those minions is the way it should have been from the very beginning. That said, this is also going to be the death of probably the biggest video on my channel, so rip and that's it for the weekly update we had some really big news in there level 100 is coming and it's going to be fantastic if you enjoyed this content you made it this far please consider hitting that like button it really does help this channel out quite a bit as well as hit subscribe so you can see when more great content comes out we recorded this live over at twitch.tv slash the mongoolie show on saturday morning and if you want to come join that conversation head over there and hit that follow button so you know when we go live and you can be part of the conversation chad has been talking to me and i've been ignoring them so i'm gonna have to go back and see what all they're saying but if you want to join me over there other than that everybody have a great week good luck unlocking sunspot and we'll see you next time good luck to you